Hey, I'm tracking our next big storm system for the Mid-Atlantic in the Northeast, but will it live up to the social media hype? I'll let you know, coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski, and as always, before we get going, we always like to thank all the new subscribers. Quickly growing, it's great to see. We're up to 2,424 of you. And if you're the 97% who have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider. Do me the honor, do me the pleasure. Just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content, and give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below as it really helps as we try to grow this Weather Nerds channel. All right, well, you know, we're tracking our next storm system here, and it is uh, let, setting off some uh, weather advisories, switch to weather advisories and winter storm warnings across New Mexico here on your Thursday morning. And uh, we're going to be tracking this very closely as we go into this upcoming weekend as we're focusing in on this potential nor'easter, looking very likely for the northeast. So let's go ahead and dive into what you need to know for this edition. We're going to take a look at the latest European model and take a look at the latest track on this developing low that's going to track across the southeast and then up the eastern seaboard. We're also going to look at a regional map. We're going to look at the North American model. We're now close enough now. We can take a look at the shorter term models and see how it's tracking. We'll take a look at the latest on the rain and the snow totals and uh, you know I'm not going to hype the snow totals on this storm. I really don't like hyping snow totals until we get to about you know 40 hours out and uh, it looks like it's backing off just a little bit as far as the amounts. And then finally, we'll take a sneak peek ahead at storm number two, which is looking to be the stronger of the two storms heading into next week. So, lots to talk about. Let's go ahead and take a look at that European model. So we're gonna begin the latest European model run here on Friday morning. We're gonna take you right through the weekend as we track this storm system across the south and heading up the eastern seaboard. This is as of January 4th, the zero-z run of the European. So let's go ahead and track this as I go ahead and zip on out of here as we see this, a little bit of snows here across areas of Kansas and coming into Oklahoma right in here. And you've seen the rains right along the Gulf Coast, right along the Texas Gulf Coast. It's gonna be tracking into Louisiana as we head throughout the day on Friday. So you see the rain's kind of spreading there. Now, there's some residual cold air that's in place through here. So uh, just to the eastern part of the Appalachians, you could see some light icing uh, briefly take place. I think it'll quickly change over, but uh, some sleet, freezing rain, not out of the question here. You've seen the pinks in, in there. Uh, it's kind of mixing in there with some of that cold air at the surface, a little warmer aloft, so you're not getting the snows there. But the snows will increase across New England as we go into late in the day on Saturday. So by late in the day on Saturday, about 7 o'clock, you're seeing the snows kind of increasing across Pennsylvania and along uh, the uh, I-95 corridor going up through New Jersey. Now, I think the major cities, New York City, I right now I just don't think it's going to be a, too big a deal there. I think a lot of the heavier snows will be inland. I'm not a big fan of forecasting snow tolls until we're inside 48 hours, and this is 60 hours out, so a little bit, little, little bit further out here. And then it kind of slides right along the coast there, uh, kind of riding up into areas of Maine as we go into Sunday morning. So you still see the snows there along the coast and the areas here from New York and uh, stretching up through New Jersey, uh, a little bit on the wraparound moisture there. And then it slides off the eastern seaboard as we go into Monday morning. And then our attention will turn to storm system number two. We'll talk about storm system number two in just a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at the North American model and we'll look at the regional approach. We're starting the southeast and then we'll track it up the eastern seaboard before we take a look at some of the rain and snow totals. So we're going to begin by looking at the regional here, the southeast. You're looking at the North American model beginning on Friday morning. Time stamp down there in your bottom left-hand corner as we track the storm system here across the southeast. So as it pulls on in, we'll see the rains increasing across areas of Louisiana, Mississippi. Definitely a wet day across Jackson and coming in toward New Orleans as we go throughout the day on Friday. This will move through the overnight period going through Alabama and Georgia as we go through Saturday night. And because of some residual cold air in place, you may get a brief mixing of some uh, freezing rain or sleet into areas right up in here briefly as it'll tr quickly transition back over to rain. So I'm not expecting a big icing problem with this as this moves on in. Yes, you've seen the pink there across portions of South Carolina, North Carolina, but it'll be short-lived. It'll quickly turn over toward rain as this begins to move off. This is Saturday morning. So uh, Atlanta, Montgomery, Birmingham, everybody cleared out by Saturday morning. And then the frontal system will move off toward the south and east 
and uh, looking pretty good and dry as we go into Sunday across the southeast, although it will be a bit on the nippy side. Now let's go ahead and shift gears. We'll switch over to the uh, mid-Atlantic and we'll track this system as it goes up the up the east coast here. Now watch what the North American model is doing. Now this is again an intermediate model. only goes out about 84 hours but watch as the storm system comes up. Again you got some residual cold air that's in place and so we're going to get some of this brief wintry mix here of sleet and freezing rain across areas of North Carolina going into Virginia. You've seen the snows here obviously across the higher elevations of Virginia and West Virginia right through here getting in on some of the snow action and uh, coming into the nation's capital with some snow there as well. Uh, it's sitting right on the edge there, so it could be a rain-snow thing. And then this quickly moves up to the north and east as we go through the overnight period from Saturday and into Sunday. Here come the snows. It keeps it rain for Long Island, and I think New York City may just see a brief dusting here. Uh, it really depends on the track of that low. And then most of the interior sections of New England will get uh, a decent snow uh, total out of this as it goes up into the northeast as we go into the end of this run on Sunday morning. So not an overly strong nor'easter, but something that uh, will cause some travel headaches and problems for the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as we go into this upcoming weekend. So if you have any travel plans, definitely make sure you check ahead with your carrier. Now, with that all shown to you, let's go ahead and go back to European. We'll talk about the rain totals and the snow totals with this first nor'easter of 2024. As we take a look at some of the uh, projected rainfall totals with the European model with this first storm here across the areas of the southeast, uh, you can see areas here, maybe upwards of an inch plus. Uh, those areas that are purple, you're going to get uh, one inch, and it's a little darker, maybe getting close to two inches. So one to two inches rain in the isolated areas there. And then, you know, some of the rain equivalent up here in the New England, uh, maybe seeing a few purplish areas in there as well. So if you get one inch of rain, that's almost equivalent to a foot of snow, 10 to 12 inches, somewhere in there. So as this comes on up toward the north, some of this obviously rain will be in the form of snow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the snow projections here as we switch over to the uh, areas here across New England. And in all the purple areas that you see highlighted, that is six inches plus with the potential snow totals here. Uh, so, uh, but notice as we get around like New York, it's like on the cusp, New York City, right about an inch or so. Uh, but up in Boston, maybe close to a foot, and some of this interior stuff upwards of a foot. But most areas in this purple looks like uh, in the six to eight inch range with the snow totals. Now, with that being said, that's what the European model is showing out. Let's go back over to the European model, or to the NAM model, I should say, the North American model, and I'm going to show you the latest, what this is showing as snow totals. Nowhere near as aggressive on here. So you're seeing snow totals here uh, much lighter, maybe in the four to six inch range with some higher totals in here getting close to six, but it is definitely uh, lighter. And again, New York City is right on the cusp here. Long Island not getting anything, and just the interior section showing a lighter uh, dusting of snow. I mean, not just a dusting, but lighter amounts of snow across areas of Pennsylvania, New York, and heading in, into Massachusetts and Connecticut. So, a little difference of opinion on the models again, but again, this is uh, still more than a couple days out, and typically once we get inside about two days, we can pretty much fine tune where that snow amounts will be the heaviest and we'll probably have a better idea of what we can expect. All right, so with all that done, we've got, talked about storm number one, we talked about the snow totals, rain totals, and its path for this upcoming weekend. Let's go ahead and shift gears. We'll go ahead and take a look at storm number two, which still looks to be the stronger of the two storms we're tracking here going into next week. So as we go ahead and focus in here on storm number two, as we're going in on a Monday here back on the European model, you can see where the storm system is kind of sitting there across the Texas panhandle. And uh, this is when the storm system is really going to start getting going as we go from Monday and into Tuesday. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here. We're going to zoom in a little bit closer and watch this low pressure system as it tracks across areas of the deep south first before it moves up into the central portion of the country. So again, you see in the rains and the storms there as we go into Monday and Tuesday, and it's gonna be that area right in there, uh, and we'll stop it right here. It's gonna be this area right here from the, about the Florida Panhandle, stretching back over to Texas, right through this region here where the potential for severe weather will be at its greatest right through there. Could see some potential tornado watches that could go up as we go into Monday and Tuesday as the storm tra system tracks 
off toward the east. So you're seeing the snows on the back side of this as we go in, uh, forward into in the time. I'll go ahead and zoom back out here again. You can see the snows kind of expanding across areas of Iowa and stretching back through Texas. So this is obviously a more interior storm and not like the one we're seeing for this upcoming weekend. So pretty decent heavy rains across Alabama and Georgia uh, as the storm system continues to move off toward the east. And uh, again, we'll watch that move up toward the north. There's high pressure up here toward the north. So maybe briefly seeing little snows on this, but it looks like a lot of moisture is going to really surge. Warm air is going to surge on the on the top side of this. And watch that pressure drop with this storm system, 989 millibars down to 983. A lot of mixing. You see a lot of that purple in there. That's a sleet snow kind of a mix through there on the peripheries. It goes through areas of Missouri and into Illinois and then across the north uh, heading into Michigan and it really bottoms out. So if the European is holding up true as we going from late in the day on Tuesday, you're looking at the potential for blizzard conditions across areas of Michigan and maybe near Chicago uh, as we go into late in the day on Tuesday and this thing really drops off to a 969 uh, uh, low. That's a very strong low pressure system. You're seeing mostly rains again across most of New England. Some of the interior sections will still hold on to some rain there. But uh, look at the uh, very strong winds rotating around this area of low pressure. So uh, quite breezy to say the least. This is the one we're going to be watching with most attention heading into next week. But 964, that's like a Category 2 hurricane there as it moves up toward the north. And then things begin to improve. But conditions across eastern Canada will be a mess. Toronto uh, heading up to Quebec. That's going to be a real mess for the folks up in Canada. But once this moves on by, things will begin to improve as we go into next week, at least briefly before the next storm system comes around. So I'm going to back this up once again. We're going to track this through. Once again, look at the timestamp there at the top. As you see the storm system uh, on Monday uh, progress across the south. That's where the heavy rains will be falling there across the south. Much heavier than what they're going to see with this weekend event. And then we'll watch the snow totals here on the, the edge of this and some mixing with freezing rain and snow as it comes on in again, heading late in the day on Tuesday. This could be some very heavy snows and blizzard conditions across areas of Michigan before this pulls up into Canada and uh, provides a big wind mess up that way as we go in throughout the day on your Wednesday. So that's the latest on that storm system. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. Well, that's it for this edition. Again, we're gonna have a lot of activity going on here over the next week with colder temperatures, a couple snow events we're gonna watch, and I will be doing live updates uh, throughout the period for both storm systems. So if you'd like to get those notifications, get those little live updates, uh, please just go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, again, just give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think here as I continue to try to refine and improve this product to help serve you guys better and be weather prepared in your areas across the nation. That's a look at the latest. Again, thank you very much. Always a pleasure and an honor to serve you guys. Take it easy. We'll see you on the, the next update. Bye-bye for now.